What is up everybody? Welcome back to the channel. Today on Tactical Pineapple, we are going to go over day one of the Kyle Rittenhouse trial. Uh, but before we do that, I'd like to tell you today's video is sponsored by store.tacticalpineapple.com. We've got new merch over there. We've got the general Tactical Pineapple logo. We've got the Tactical Pineapple Rides logo. And released literally just this morning is the all new Tactical Pineapple flag. Um, head on over there, check it out again. That's store.tacticalpineapple.com. If you were like me and of the larger persuasion, there is a button to click that says uh, plus size contact the Tactical Pineapple sales team. That will contact me directly and it is subject to availability because unfortunately, larger sizes are not readily available in America right now and they're not coming in. Can't imagine why. So yeah, like I said, today we are going to discuss day one of the Kyle Rittenhouse trial. Uh, basically, jury selection. It was a long day for everybody involved. Uh, they started early, about 10 o'clock in the morning. Um, they, they even said that judge uh, beat prosecuting attorney and the defense attorney into the courtroom. And of course, most people are punctual. About 150 Kenosha residents were there and present for the jury selection. And uh, Judge Schroeder, uh, in good fashion, um, entertained everybody with Jeopardy-style questions. So uh, good on Judge Schroeder for at least having a little bit of levity in the situation and not just sitting there in silence and, and leaving everybody hanging. But anyways, once, once everything kicked off at about 10 o'clock-ish this morning, uh, the defense began their voir dire of everybody, uh, which if you're not familiar with it, voir dire is the process of basically questioning a pool of jurors to eliminate individuals down. Um, they can literally mark people off the list for absolutely no reason. Nothing has to be stated. Um, simply, if they don't like the way you look, you can be cut out. Now, that being said, I, like I said, they started with 150 jurors. Throughout the entire day, they did narrow it down to 34 relatively quickly. Um, those 34 people were questioned for pretty much the rest of the day. So uh, imagine the worst case of jury duty ever um, in just questioning. So um, up until lunchtime, they were questioned by uh, the defense attorney, Shirafisi. Um, Shirafisi, however you want to pronounce it. He focused pretty heavily around gun ownership. Uh, whether people felt they had a bias against people who own guns or not, stuff like that. Uh, really the emotional kind of aspects of it. Um, he, he did, you know, ask people if they had visited the, the area that was affected by the looting, the rioting, the burning uh, during all of the protests, if anybody helped clean things up. Um, not a whole lot worth noting, I guess, as far as that's concerned, um, except for the fact that... Um, when when asked if anybody felt like if somebody brought a gun to a protest they were automatically guilty of a crime or if um, it was okay form of protest uh, to destroy property nobody raised hands and objection out of the individuals that they were questioning at the time so I, I guess that lends itself pretty well to the defense um, after lunch um, there was some conversation um, between obviously the prosecuting attorney and all of these individuals um, the there wasn't a whole lot to note there as well um, he pretty much kind of leveled on the same type of stuff uh, worried a lot more heavily about whether or not somebody could be unbiased in their justifications and, and, and you know basically sitting on the jury trial and staying unbiased throughout the whole process of it uh, if they could eliminate the the, the things that they had already heard in the news from their mind and, and focus just on that which is presented during the court case. Um, there were several individuals who said they couldn't. There were several individuals who were released for multiple reasons. Um, uh, in the earlier session under Sheriff Fisi, I believe he released one person for uh, simply saying that uh, they don't believe people should be allowed access to an AR-15. 
Obviously, that person is going to have a general bias against the type of gun that was used in the incident, so they're not obviously a good juror for them. And that literally is what this is about. It's about finding a good jury for yourself. Um, so one side is going to win the jury, one side is not going to win the jury, and typically the side that wins the jury is the side that wins the case. So um, today was an extremely important day, and there was no shortage of people being serious about the whole incident. So uh, uh, the, the prosecuting attorney... Uh, Thomas Binger, I believe his name is, uh, he did question people from around lunchtime until well after 2 p.m. Um, there was a, a little bit of a break in there after that. And then around 4 o'clock, the judge, the prosecuting attorney, and the defense attorney all got together with about, I think, I think they pretty much carried 34 people into a separate area of the courthouse the library, not due to concerns of security or anything like that, but just to kind of go off camera, but still be in an area where they could ensure there was no just, you know, basically tampering of jurors and stuff like that. So um, this definitely allowed a little bit more spread out questioning and to be less, I guess, inhibited by those that are around you. So jury selection typically is done as a group. This was kind of, individuals kind of interviewing individual people so um, that took place until almost seven o'clock at night and they they did manage to weed the jury pool down to 20 individuals which is what the judge was looking for he wanted 12 jurors and eight stand-ins in case whatever happens um, there were some jurors who did voice some concern about security one person in particular said that they actually came to the courthouse today in a lift because they didn't want people to associate a driver's license number or a vehicle identification number or anything like that to them and end up actually doxing them. So uh, there was little cause for concern. The judge basically said, I don't think there's really much for you to worry about. Um, he's never really had anybody threatened under him. I know today is completely different than the previous 38 years that he has been a judge, but there is a little bit of proof in, in that. And um, you know, as far as not really, I think people's fear generally is greater than the risk, uh, especially when you're something like a juror, um, at least at the beginning of the trial or throughout the process of the trial. It's after the trial that you have to worry about it, uh, at which point, you know, there's some obviously security issues that could come up if, depending on what side you come up on. Um, all that is said to really say that um, the judge does not believe he's going to sequester anybody. He doesn't believe they're going to have to um, shut everybody in for the duration of the trial, which he still believes will last about two weeks. Um, tomorrow, or today, by the time you're actually watching this video, Tuesday, they are going to begin the uh, opening arguments. So uh, I will do some coverage of this pretty much probably for the next two weeks solid. This is what you guys are going to see, um, unless there's really nothing to talk about, which entirely could be true. Um, there just really isn't a lot to be said there. So out of all 12 individuals that uh, were selected for the jury in particular, um, I don't know why anybody needed to make note of this. I, I believe they said nine of them were women and one was a person of color. So make it what you will. I know there are individuals who are going to say it's racist, it's biased, and, and it's just bullshit. Um, the jury is selected based on multiple reasons, and this is just the people that were selected. So um, there wasn't a whole lot of protest today outside of the courthouse. A small group of uh, individuals were there, um, led for whatever reason by uh, Jacob Blake's uncle, because apparently now the victim of the police shooting is somehow the person who has some privilege to protest this but um whatever it's going to be somebody it has to be somebody may as well be him right so like i said not a whole lot today to hang hats on um we'll see how this pairs out i guess in two weeks when the jury goes to deliberation on the trial so um like i said i will continue to keep you guys updated and until the next video uh stay safe folks carry your pistols Brandon fucking hates him.